Hello and welcome to the newest Reykjavik Reipads newscast. My name, name is of course Valur Grettisson, I'm an editor-in-chief at the Reykjavik Reipain. This dog here that I'm get, trying to get a little bit tired is Polly, our chief of morale officers. You want to swim again? Yeah. She loves to swim actually, she loves water, ocean, whatever. She jumps just straight into this, uh, no matter what, it's incredible. Uh, and she just, uh, she can easily swim, of course. She's basically like a four-wheel truck, if, if you want to compare it to anything. Uh, before we start, I want to tell you, of course, about the discount box that we have, uh, and Volcano. Uh, we have, like, these lava lumps, and we send this with every packet. We give you this. Uh, we don't want to sell it, uh, because it's, uh, well... It's nature, it's beautiful, you should just have it. Uh, and uh, we, we pick this up every time, me and us, when we go to the volcano. When we see this, this is all around, it's, it's enough of it. We're not breaking anything. And uh, if you buy this, uh, like whatever you buy basically this week, uh, until Thursday, after a week, I, th I think... Uh, <laughs> I'm um, pretty sure, then you can, uh, uh, you will have these, uh, these lava lumps always with your boxes. So go to our homepage or just link, you can see the links down here uh, and uh, find everything about this. Also, we want to remind you again, of course, on our <coughs> uh, Instagram competition. Uh, if you go to our homepage, there is a very nice video of a, of a volcano. If you like it and tag someone, uh, you can actually win one of these boxes, volcano box, actually, uh, for free. And uh, so you don't have to pay for anything. So just like and subscribe. We're trying to, uh, of course, we want to have uh, more people seeing what we're doing. And it, it can be fun. It's nice pictures. Uh, a lot of volcano when there is volcano, a lot of culture when it's a lot of cultures. And it's just absolutely wonderful page. Also, all the pictures that Art takes, we try to put them in there. So you, you can't go wrong there. Uh, yes, and now into the news, just after the intro. First news today is that the Volcano Trail has opened again. Uh, it was closed yesterday for a very good reason. There was an absolute storm basically yesterday. Uh, it was a yellow warning, which is the mildest warning that we have when it comes to weather. But it's pretty bad. And it was a pretty bad weather actually. It was not that easy even to stand uh, where, uh, like uh, in the area. And, and people actually tried to go there. But the police had stopped, like, uh, have had blocks on the road, blockades, uh, and they stopped a lot of people, actually. Just keep in mind, I mean, it's incredible that we just have to <laughs> do this. Uh, but keep in mind, if the weather is bad, uh, you can be in a lot of danger in this area if you're not paying attention to weather and so on. And it's, I mean, I don't know, uh, like, how tough you are as a hiker or whatever, but this is, of course... Uh, always going to be a nightmarish hike for whoever. And on top of that, when you are at the volcano, you won't even probably see it because uh, the weather can be so bad. For example, just today, you can see how calm and nice it is. But when we came here, there was like pouring rain. Uh, we had to wait a little bit before we started this, although Polly loved it. Uh, and it's because, I mean, weather in Iceland is always changing so rapidly. I mean, today we're lucky because it's just, I mean, rain can, can, doesn't hurt anyone, and especially not in the city. We are in the city. We are here actually in Gravarvogur. It's like a suburb in Iceland, and it's really nice. And if you can see here, for example, in the area over there, uh, the, the famous uh, musician Damon Albarn used to be a song, singer at Blur and he was also at Gorillas. He actually lives somewhere around this area there and he became an Icelandic citizen last year. Uh, and, uh, and, yeah, like, and it's not like a place for the richest people, it's just a pretty basic place. So, bitte. So, uh, <clears throat> yeah, uh, volcanologist says that uh, the volume that is coming from the, from the volcano 
it's quite it's like alarmingly low it's around three cubic meters per second and if it will go lower this means that uh, the volcano will well well not have the 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 uh, the power to just operate anymore. It will just die out. Uh, it's very low, uh, according to them. We haven't made it to the volcano yet. We were going to go uh, on Tuesday uh, or Wednesday, but then weather uh, is always like that. We, of course, don't go there in, like, in, in these storms uh, for obvious reasons, uh, but uh, we're going to go on Monday and we're going to show you exactly how the thing, things there are. And this is interesting because... Uh, there are like several like op options that are here, like that uh, like could play out. First of all, it could just go down, uh, which would be interesting in itself, or it could even uh, form new craters, which have happened before. We don't really know because we don't know that much about this volcano. It's uh, it's behaving uh, very differently from uh, other volcanoes that we have. We know that the area at the Reykjanes Peninsula is now very active and will be for decades, if not hundreds of years. They think it might be for 200 years. So if it goes down, don't worry, there will be another volcano within, uh, within years at least. Although it's, it's impossible to say anything about it. Uh, <clears throat> but this volcanologist says that, well, he gave it basically days or weeks. So if it's going to go down, it will, it will happen in the next days or the next few weeks. We will know soon enough. Uh, also, the lava, it's 40 meters thick. It's around 131 feet in, in, in thickness. Uh, and therefore, it takes very long time for the lava actually to cool down. Uh, the core of it is still melting uh, months, weeks after, uh, at least weeks, I think, or even if not months after the everything, <coughs> after it goes down, and this means uh, this means that uh, <coughs> that uh, uh, yeah, that this means basically that uh, it's not very safe to walk on the lava. Although the 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 volcano has stopped, it's still very very uh, dangerous. Uh, so keep in mind, just don't uh, walk on the lava. I went through this, of course, the last time. It's a little bit preachy. Yeah. Uh, uh, okay, so it doesn't have to be in, uh, in a lease. That's something new. And there is uh, hot water testing wells. I haven't been here for the longest time. But there is, of course, a lot of hot water around here. So let's try this. Let's just watch out for the water. <coughs> uh, yeah, the thing is, it could take actually decades for the lava to cool down. Uh, this is exciting because this doesn't mean that, uh, although the volcano is done, doesn't mean that uh, the events there are done. Uh, you will still have steaming lava, and it's, it's pretty uh, amazing just to see the lava field, I have to say. Uh, like uh, uh, the the old lava is incredibly beautiful, and it's like the colors in it and everything, and the the combination and, and forms and whatever. Uh, it can be very very impressive. So if if you wanna to see, I mean, uh, the the area will be beautiful afterwards. And if the lava, if the volcano will go down, it's pretty obvious that it will uh, go up again. Let's say a year or two. <laughs> I mean. That's just the reality of the area now. It's going to be highly active for the next few years. Hmm. Another dog was here, I guess. Hey, pull here. Uh, two other things. Air waves. I don't know if you remember or have heard about this uh, uh, music festival. It's the biggest one in Iceland and it's absolutely brilliant. The Icelandic Airwaves, Iceland Airwaves, is a music festival since, uh, like a showcase festival for Icelandic music. And it has been here uh, for decades. Reykjavik Grapevine has always had a very special relationship with, with this festival because we actually, uh, like in the beginning, we were very close tied to this festival. In some ways, the Reykjavik Grapevine, as a cultural magazine, was designed to kind of like tell the, the English audience 
the, everything about this. And this, of course, evolved throughout the time. Uh, they are, of course, because uh, because of COVID, they haven't been able to have the festival for two years. But it's going to be now in the uh, beginning of November, like always. And these festivals are absolutely brilliant. They are like four or four days, I think. Uh, they have the best, like the cream of the Icelandic music. You can see Löwe there. Uh, she was in our podcast the other day. She's a jazz singer. Um, she was in the Jimmy Kimmel show uh, earlier this year. Incredibly fun and energetic woman and uh, a crazy singer. I love her. We will also see their Sole. Uh, Sole is uh, my favorite. Uh, she published a fantastic album, The Modern Melancholia, uh, earlier this year. Uh, it's uh, last year, sorry, late last year. And she got uh, our, uh, uh, the Reykjavik Grape and voted her as the, uh, the, her album, the best of last year. Incredible album, if you like that and if you like music, this will be the festival to go to. So I encourage you to just Google it, check it out, watch some videos. <coughs> and if you want to uh, visit Iceland uh, over the winter, this is a fantastic opportunity. This is also very lively, both for us at Gregia Greipan. Many uh, journalists come to Iceland from Rolling Stones and, uh, and basically all the biggest music uh, magazines uh, in the world. And, I mean, if you're lucky, you could just, perhaps you'll meet the next Björk there. <laughs> Something like that. Uh, <clears throat> yes, and then to crimes, which is basically why I'm here. Uh, <clears throat> imagine that, so like <laughs> the contrast of beauty and, and crimes, right? Uh, you can perhaps, uh, I don't know if I can show you. Uh, there is a ship there and cranes and a lot of containers over there. This is our harbor. Uh, when we're importing stuff, we basically port it there. This is the first touching stone, and then all of the companies come, they get their stuff, put it in the, in the, in the windows of their stores or whatever, and sell them. Uh, drug import is also there, <laughs> often, not always, of course. Uh, we had this biggest uh, cocaine case in the history of Iceland the other day, Four people are in custody because of this, and they try to import 100, 100 kilos of cocaine to Iceland through a container. It was hidden with other goods that they were selling. Uh, talking about cocaine, Polly doesn't need one. She is like the most natural cocaine element I've ever seen. Uh, but this, uh, the last big, like the second biggest uh, cocaine import that we've ever heard about, was 16 kilos. So this is huge, I have to say. Uh, not only that, uh, the police says actually uh, that, uh, you know, the, like the, what happened actually is came, the ship came from the Netherlands. The police found the, the drugs in Netherlands. They, uh, they of course, reported it to the Icelandic police. And the Icelandic police, they uh, waited for the guys to come and pick it up. And they were all arrested, of course. It's going fine, this investigation, according to the police. But they were asked, actually, does this affect the cocaine market in Iceland? I mean, 100 kilos, it sounds quite a lot. But the Icelandic police, they say, no, probably not. There is so much drugs actually flowing into Iceland that this will just dent it a little bit, but not that much. Which is alarming, I have to say. I mean, I'm not a young man anymore. And <laughs> But I guess that people do cocaine and, and drugs just all, all, like in, in every age. But there seems to be a lot of uh, drug abuse uh, right now in Iceland. And it's uh, interesting just to see the volume of cocaine that they are um, try, trying to import. And they often say that the, what the, like the, they only find like a, a, like a small percent of that that gets actually into the country which is interesting in, its, in itself. But Icelanders, of course, do uh, drugs like every other nation. Uh, it's probably, a, I mean, per capita, I bet it's a little bit higher than in other Nordic countries. But uh, the police is quite good at this. Uh, there are very heavy convictions that you can get in Iceland for this. And keep in mind when I say heavy, it's like co compared to other crimes in Iceland. Um, of course, in the US, you would get like a thousand years or something for this. 
but uh, in Iceland they might get up to 10 years in, in jail for, for something like this. It would be, it would, I would not be surprised if it would go that high. 10 years in prison in Iceland is high. You get 16 years for murders, for example, and uh, it shows you just how, how like the, the system here works. Icelanders uh, believe in reform, uh, that people can reform. Uh, we don't have many cases of people killing again, for example. Uh, there are cases that, have, that this have happened, but, uh, but they are extremely few. Uh, <clears throat> yes, and three Italians, were, <laughs> they were busted. Uh, they were driving north of Vatnajökull in the highlands, and they were actually driving off-road, like uh, as it seems, like in the sands there. Now, uh, the, like this is highly illegal actually in Iceland. You can't drive off-road. Uh, you have to have a permission uh, and so on. The reason is, of course, especially in the sands in the highland, because there is perhaps uh, not ma many uh, much grass or flowers there, because uh, it, it's literally like a desert. Uh, but we need to protect the little that is there. So these Italians, they actually were, <laughs> were went like out of off-road at least in three different places. And the police found them, and they fined them for 250,000 Icelandic krona each, uh, which is around like 1,500 to 2,000 dollars. It's not much, but it's fair enough. Uh, and the thing is, of course, they just uh, they were kind of just busted. They they found the car, they were sent on the car, and then they just uh, confessed that they did this. Uh, and just, uh, it's not that remarkable, I mean, this happens, but it's a good reminder, a good, op a good opportunity, just to rem remind you that uh, it is illegal to drive off-road in Iceland, and often you will see, like, almost these deserts in Iceland, like, just black deserts, uh, and it seems like you're not going to destroy anything while, <laughs> while driving in them. But if you do, Icelanders will be really pissed, and they will actually try to hunt you down and find you. And... Uh, so don't don't do that. Uh, although uh, it seems fine, it isn't. Yes, and a political storm is brewing in <coughs> in this beautiful city of Reykjavik. And just look at this. <coughs> we can even see Kailir from here, and Faradarsfjall on the right side, just peeking over the city line here. What happened the other day is that, well, the beginning of the story is actually quite funny, it's, and it's almost as predictable as it can be. Uh, politicians uh, in Reykjavik uh, were in deep trouble before the last elections. They were not doing too hot, uh, and, uh, but the, like nobody was doing too hot, actually. But uh, the, the parties that are, like, was in coalition at the time they promised that they would uh, get all children, 12 months and older, into kindergarten. This is actually a complicated issue that Icelanders have been fighting for for the longest time. Because uh, after 12 months, you, don't, you, you, you can't have any more maternity leave. Uh, and you can't go to work with your child, I guess. Well, not, not everybody, I guess. Uh, and if you don't get into these uh, kindergartens, you are kind of screwed. So the thing is that uh, <coughs> they promised this and they got themselves back on track and they ended up like kind of winning the elections. Uh, the Social Democrats, the Pirate Party and the Reform Party, they made a new coalition with the Progressive Party. This coalition, they uh, went into the summer and it doesn't seem like they did much. What they did actually is that they didn't do anything. Well, not so surprising when it comes to politicians. Uh, and in the end of the summer, parents were asking, when is my child going to get into the kindergarten? Well, uh, the mayor of Reykjavik, Dagur Bjergesson, he's a fine mayor, actually, honest man, uh, he sa they said, like, uh, it's unclear. We're still working on it. And then, they, of course, they said, well, you promised us that you would fix this uh, before next winter. 
and they did. This is one of the fewer cases when you actually get, uh, like when a politician actually make a promise this clear and they completely break down this early on, like break it this early on. I mean, politicians are always breaking their promises, don't misunderstand me, but it's uh, mostly because it's very unclear what they are like uh, promising and so on. They are not like, um, they say like, for example, uh, a politician said like that, uh, he would fix this now, and then everybody said, like, yeah, then fix it now. And then he said, like, well, now it's like a word that you can uh, interpret it in, in many ways. What is now, actually? <laughs> so politicians have tried a lot of things. But in this case, parents were pissed. And parents in Iceland are, well, they are very, like, powerful group when it comes to elections. And you don't want to mess with them. So the, the, the city has been in a panic mood. Uh, they've been trying to scramble and fix this while the, 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 the minority, like in the city council, they have been criticizing and the independence party actually came up with a brilliant idea. They, she said, the, the leader, Hildur, uh, she said, why not just pay them 200,000 uh, for every month that they are actually waiting for getting in? Uh, and this is also cheaper, like 200,000 is like one to $1,200. Like this is actually cheaper than to uh, like uh, have them in, in the kindergarten. The city of course doesn't like this either. Uh, so what happened is that there is kind of a revolution <laughs> like uh, brewing. Uh, what parents did is that they all came uh, to the city hall uh, with their children, and they were like small children. This morning, today is Thursday, the 18th of August. Oh. I'm done, Polly. Just enjoy the nature, come on. So what happened is that they actually went there this morning to the city hall with their children, 12 months old, 12 to 14 months old. And there, I mean, nobody can work in these conditions, to be honest. But this has also started a new, pretty interesting debate. For example, so if we have a longer maternity leave, uh, it's one year in Iceland. Uh, a father can get, get six months, uh, the mother can have six months also, and there are some few weeks that they can uh, use between themselves. Uh, <clears throat> More, many of us use this actually. I did this with my, my girlfriend. Uh, we, we didn't have six, like 12 months at the time. It was a little bit, I think it was nine months or something, or eight months, uh, even shorter. Uh, <clears throat> it was six months, sorry, uh, when, I was, when we had our children. But they changed this, of course. But some are saying, should we have this two years? Uh, it's, of course, it's very expensive. And not only that, but like, uh, you only get like 80% of your wages, and if you're like uh, if you're a manager somewhere, you have like 20 millions per month or something, then you only get like uh, the, the highest like 600,000 Icelandic kroner or something like that, or 700. I can't remember how, how how much the high is, is, but it's not that very high, meaning that you actually lose 20% of your money, uh, like of your salaries. Really, Polly, you're not giving me one break, okay? Polly, could So uh, this means that there is like an interesting, like a, uh, interesting just position happening. Uh, the Independence Party, which are, are big believers on the on the privatizing everything, uh, they are like f further to the right than like many other parties. Although you can easily uh, state the case that they are actually like closer to the Communist Party than anything else. <laughs> well, not the Communist Party, but they are way to the left in some in in many ways and conservative also, very conservative. But they are all, all of a sudden, they have joined bands with these mothers that they have not really supported that much throughout the, <laughs> the decades, which is hilarious in its way. But the, the, the big thing here is that uh, Icelanders are fighting to get all of the children into the kindergartens at 12 months old, one year old, and they will probably get what they want. Everybody's working on this, the city is going to ensure this, but they're still building kindergartens, and, well, it's not just a failed political promise, one of many, but, uh, but this is a, a harsh one, and this could be quite expensive for the city. And I'm telling you this because there will probably be going to be more... Uh, things about this happening and like possibly a political unrest but it's also interesting because it's the first case that 
we have where, where we can see like something is heavy on the this new coalition like something tough is happening and it's interesting just to see how they are reacting and they seem like they are actually trying but the, the computer is basically saying no it's like it's always with the systems right so uh, that's it for us today uh, I've already told you way too much. I'm just really enjoying this walk here. We're gonna check if we're gonna find this hot water and show you what they're up to. Yo, yeah, yeah, holy loose. So this is the end of the newscast. Uh, we didn't find the hot water or the well or whatever that was. Uh, that they were perhaps there was an old sign or something. But uh, this island is also like quite big, so it, it's it's uh, hard to explore it. Uh, or if an island is the right word, it's just connected to the to the neighborhood of Gravavur. Uh But also just to explain where we are, you can see Vide here. We are on the other side of Vide. Uh, you probably see it all the time from the other side. And then Asian is uh, at the back of where Art is holding the camera. Basically there, yeah. Uh, I'm surprised how nice of a weather it is today. Uh, but uh, we'll be back uh, on Tuesday uh, with uh, new, more volcano news. We're going to see how the volcano is, uh, if it's going down and like how we can assess this. Yeah, what are you? <laughs> Polly is really going to town with her ball. I guess we have to throw a little bit more. But uh, remember, of course, uh, our volcano boxes. Uh, we will give you, of course, uh, these rocks here, uh, lava rocks. You can also, it's interesting, when you get them, you can feel how like easy it is to cut yourself on this. And then you perhaps understand better what I'm talking about when you like fall down on these uh, on the lava field, how it can actually damage you. So it's, it's just interesting to get this. You can get uh, like a good idea what this is all about just by getting this. So buy the volcano box if you if you want. We are very proud of those boxes. Uh, we try to give you like a we, we try to give people uh, like a, a humorous but yet a real. Uh, experience of when like well, basically it's as uh, close as you can get to the volcano so that's it for the today i'm gonna walk very slowly back to my computer at my office but uh, this is just such a good day and i just might actually just find a moss here and go to sleep or something <laughs> with polly what do you say yeah you're not done are you so until next time can't do it Cut it, yo, yo, no, hmm, oh, yeah. yeah, skill. Now, can I get it? Cut it, oh.